This city television station is so proud of the great historic landmarks that we have in Tampa that it is producing a series of programs focusing on Tampa's rich history. Today we're focusing on Jose Marti, one of the great giants of literature but also the famous apostle of Cuban independence who lived here in Tampa during the last three years of his life. He loved Tampa and we think you're going to love to hear more about the life of Jose Marti here in Tampa. Tampa is full of rich history. The father of Cuban independence, Jose Marti, lived here during the last three years of his life and is part of Tampa history. In late November 1891, when Jose Marti arrived in Tampa, our city was less than five years old, but the cigar industry was starting to blossom, transforming our fishing village into a cigar capital. Jose Marti was 38 years old when he stepped off the Henry B. Plant Railroad that had brought him from New York City where he had lived for the last 11 years. Who was Jose Marti? What brought him to Tampa? Jose Marti was born in Cuba and studied law and philosophy in Spain. He became a literary giant in Spanish literature. We can compare him to our Walt Whitman and Alistair Cook, but in the Spanish language. His poetry, essays, books, translations into English of epic novels, writing for Charles Dana's New York Sun, and as a syndicated columnist in Spanish language newspapers, where he informed the readers of the major events in the life and time of our country. He would eventually become the national hero of Cuba, the apostle of Cuban independence. He was invited to come to Tampa as a speaker at one of our revolutionary clubs in Ybor City and delivered two of his most famous speeches here in Tampa's Ybor City in a theater called El Liceo Cubano, the Cuban Lyceum on 7th Avenue and 13th Street, and it became his headquarters during his many visits. That building had been the first wooden cigar factory of the founder of Ybor City, Vicente Martinez Ybor, but he later moved his cigar factory to the large brick building on 14th Street and 9th Avenue. Jose Marti's most famous picture in Tampa, surrounded by cigar makers, was taken on the front steps of Ybor's factory, and the Cuban postal system has issued two stamps using that historic picture with Marti in Tampa, and another stamp with the picture of the Liceo Cubano, where Marti gave his two most famous speeches. His speeches were quickly published and read in cigar factories in Tampa and Key West. Marti loved Tampa. He loved its people. He called our city the loyal town, el pueblo fiel. He came to Tampa no less than 20 times during the last three years of his life. In Tampa and in Key West, he brought unity to different factions, all together for one common cause, the independence of Cuba. He was a recognized leader and together with other Cuban revolutionary leaders was hosted by Tampa's mayor, Herman Glagowski, who took them from City Hall on his mayor's carriage across the new Lafayette Bridge to visit the newly dedicated Tampa Bay Hotel. It was in Tampa that the basic principles of the Cuban Revolutionary Party were drafted. His moving oratory raised a lot of money to finance the Cuban independence movement. 
Cigar makers would volunteer one day's wages for the cause of Cuban independence. From Tampa, Jose Marti traveled to Key West. At that time, Key West was Florida's largest city and it was the cigar manufacturing capital in the United States. From Tampa, he visited Ocala's new cigar district called Marti City. On December 16, 1892, on his eighth visit of his 20 visits to Tampa, while staying in a small bungalow near what is now the Cuban Club in Ybor City, an unsuccessful attempt was made to poison him with a glass of wine. He quickly detected the odd tasting wine and spit it out. Local Cuban physician Eduardo Barbarosa quickly responded and Marti was moved to the rooming house of Ruperto and Paulina Pedroso on 8th Avenue and 13th Street, where Marti Park is now located. Mr. Pedroso became Marti's bodyguard in Tampa. Marti recovered sufficiently to return to his newspaper offices in New York City, arriving there on Christmas Eve. The next year, in 1893, Marti came to Tampa no less than seven times after celebrating his 40th birthday. In Ybor City, he visited more cigar factories and held meetings and fundraisers at the Liceo Cubano. He also traveled to Key West in the Henry B. Plant steamer and stayed in the home of Fernando Figueredo Socarras, who at the time was superintendent of schools in Monroe County and formerly had been the first elected Cuban-American to the Florida House of Representatives. That Fernando Figueredo Socarras would eventually move to Hugh McFarland's West Tampa and get elected as the first mayor of the city of West Tampa. West Tampa was fast becoming the second cigar city in Tampa, and Fernando Figueredo Socarras came to West Tampa with the Fernandez O'Halloran factory from Key West. Things moved in Tampa so fast that Tampa was booming. The city of Port Tampa had just become incorporated. Tampa's Henry Mitchell had just gotten elected governor of Florida, and plans were underway to make West Tampa an independent city, especially after the Fortune Street Bridge opened up. In the year 1894, Marti came to Tampa at least five more times. He used the new streetcar system rolling in and out of West Tampa from Ybor City. New cigar factories in this area meant more financial support for Marti's effort. Marti's friends in Tampa were getting elected to city council, like Ramon Rubiera de Armas, Emilio Pons, Candido Martinez Ibor, Ramon Rivero Rivero, and others. Ramon Rivero had been the person that introduced Marti when he gave his famous speeches in El Liceo Cubano. And Rivero had been the publisher of local Cuban patriotic newspapers like La Revista de Florida, the Florida Magazine, and later El Critico de Ybor City, the critic of Ybor City, and whose newspaper, Cuba, had become the official voice of the Cuban Revolutionary Party, founded here in Tampa by Jose Marti. In the fall of 1894, on his 19th visit to Tampa, Marti was informed and saw firsthand the results of a devastating fire in downtown Tampa and the bad storm that hit our city causing significant damage to the cigar factories in West Tampa, especially the roof of the Fernandez O'Halloran Cigar Factory, where our West Tampa library is now located. Marti's last known visit was in October of 1894, where he alerted his most trusted friends that the necessary war of Cuban independence would soon start. 
The last cigar factory Marti visited was the Emilio Pons factory in Ybor City, near the small Henry B. Plant Railroad Station. On January 28, Jose Marti celebrated his 42nd birthday, his last, with a handful of friends in New York City. The next day, Jose Marti signed the Order of Uprising, the Order of Uprising, giving it to his trusted secretary, Attorney Gonzalo de Quesada, with instructions, take it to West Tampa. On February 2nd in 1895, Fernando Figueredo Socarras received the Order of Uprising and asked Blas Fernandez O'Halloran, the owner of the cigar factory, where the now West Tampa Library is located, to roll the order into a cigar. That cigar was taken by Henry B. Plant's steamer to Key West by Marti's trusted secretary, de Quesada. He would eventually become Cuba's first ambassador to the United States. In Key West, de Quesada passed the loaded cigar to another trusted courier, Miguel Angel Duque de Estrada, who took it on the plant ferry to Havana and delivered the contraband, the loaded cigar, to Juan Gualberto Gomez, who took his pocket knife, cutting open the West Tampa cigar and ordering the revolutionary forces to start the War of Independence, February 24, 1895. Marti landed in Cuba shortly thereafter and unfortunately was killed on May 19, 1895, in a small skirmish in Oriente province on the eastern side of Cuba. The famous American journalist and publisher of the New York Sun, Charles Dana, wrote a glowing obituary remembering the intellectual brilliance of Jose Marti, his trusted employee. Marti's 95 War of Independence continued, and when the USS Maine mysteriously exploded in Havana Harbor, the U.S. intervened in that Cuban-Spanish War, and Tampa played a key role in the Spanish-American War. On May 20, 1902, Cuba became an independent country fulfilling Marti's dream of Cuba Libre, free Cuba. This has been a brief overview of the life and time of Jose Marti here in Tampa. We hope you've enjoyed it and we thank this city station for bringing you this great historical review. My name is E.J. Salcines and invite you to join us for another program. <laughs>